Etta did the same thing that I would have did, okay? We know that these ninjas here can't protect me, okay? They don't know how to do that, all right? Because things, you know, I don't know. I don't trust these niggas. I don't know these niggas, right? So first thing that Uptown Nay Rob would do is go back uptown, okay? Because I grew up with some ferocious niggas. You hear me? Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below in the description bar and or the join button here on the YouTube and for a small monthly fee of $5. You babies, yes you, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Months passed, things cooled. The pimp and I had moved to the Taft Hotel. He'd been in trouble with the law and I was paying his heavy attorney and court fees. I may have bought Harvey Fuqua a phonograph and a little diamond pinky ring, but my financial ties to the pimp were deeper and dumber. I was underwriting a sure enough criminal. More and more, I knew I had to get away. Yet more and more, I felt trapped. Once in a while, when the pimp was back in Boston, I'd go out to Jackie Wilson's apartment over the Sire Arms on 57th Street, just down the street from the old Holiday Inn. Jackie, like John Lewis's wife, and would invite us over for an evening of Coke in conversation. Now, let me tell you about this day, okay? Now, don't forget she messing with this crazy ninja. She thinking the ninja back in Boston, okay? They over there chilling, all right? Jackie Wilson, his cohorts, okay? Uh, John Lewis's wife, Artie, and Etta, okay? All of a sudden, you got a bang at the door. Boom, 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 okay? Bust through the door is crazy pimp. Pimp gets out on one dude, choking him. Okay, then all of a sudden Jackie Wilson comes out the room. It's like, what the? So Jackie Wilson comes out the back room and see his man getting whooped by pimp. Okay, all of a sudden Jackie Wilson got in there and started whooping his ass. Etta say, now I see why Jackie Wilson was a Golden Glove Golden Gloves winner. Uh, girl, if you think one second it's gonna be okay, the ass whooping that Jackie put on your man, he gonna put that on you later. Girl, stop playing with me. Pay attention, girl. If I see you again, the pimp told me before Jackie kicked his ass out, I'm killing you. You ain't nothing but a Jackie Wilson groupie. After that incident, how did I wind up living with the pimp back at the Sheraton Hotel again? Maybe it was just two negatives attracting each other. Or maybe after some weeks in, of peace and quiet, I figured the boy had reformed. Plus, being high so much of the time didn't do wonders for my judgment. So anyway, they at a friend's house, okay? Etta gets up to pour herself a drink, okay? Etta goes to the kitchen. Her dude, the pimp, is following behind her, okay? It was a, a, a kind of a new style refrigerator where you couldn't uh, figure out how to open the refrigerator. But then Etta figured it out. Oh, okay, it's a, you know, button on the floor. Let me hit the button. And, okay, the door opens. The pimp then gone crazy. He thinking in his mind, wait a minute, you've been here before. 
You for these niggas here? No. I mean, I it's I mean, I figured it out. I'm not stupid. Smack, you're not stupid. I didn't say you was stupid. What I said was that you was getting all these men in here. And the rest of the night, Etta ain't saying nothing because you know this ninja is tripping, right? She's saying to herself, watching him do booger sugar and um, drink alcohol. She looking at him going, oh, please let this ninja pass out tonight. Yes, yes, take another two. Yes, yes. Oh, that, let's put that Hennessy on his ass. Yeah, Ugh, yes, please, no, oh, what is that? Give him anything, anything. Just make his ass fall, pass out. His ass didn't pass out when he got to the house. When they got home, this dude started whooping her ASS with everything, okay? He gets a wine bottle, breaks it across her back. She initially thought it was the wine, no girl. That's the blood that's dripping from her body. You heard me? She like, oh, I got to get away from this nigga. My mind started racing. I eyed the door. I had to get out of there, but how? I had my pistol on top of the television, but earlier that day, the pimp had taken out the bullets. What, what, why did you let him know that you had the pistol, girl? Why did you even tell him about that? You don't tell somebody that you're going to but kill Earlier him. that day, the pimp had taken out the bullets. No matter, John Lewis had taught me always to keep an extra bullet in my purse. And so I had. I also remember the story John had told me about this man, a cop, who beat his woman so viciously that she shot him in his sleep. She put a revolver in his ear and pulled the trigger. The judge let her off because she could prove she had been beaten. Well, that planted a seed. I was so nervous that I put the bullet into the wrong chamber. Now I'd have to turn the chamber. I gotta get to the door. So I tiptoed to the door. I opened that door. I eased out that door and glory hallelujah, I closed that door behind me. I was free. John Lewis was staying at the same Sheraton on another floor. Dizzy and shaky, I barely made it to his room where I knocked on the door. John, it's Etta. I'm hurt, man. I'm bleeding. John wouldn't let me in. Let me tell you why John wouldn't let her in. Okay? Because John is more concerned with the bitch who ain't his bitch, ain't his wife, already in the room. Okay, that's one thing. You ain't about to bring no issues here. And because John had all his juggy in there, okay? You come around here, then that means I got to call the cops to help your ass, girl. I got to call the police, and then they gonna see me with this bitch that ain't my wife, and they gonna realize that I got her one all up and through here. No, girl, go away, Etta. Go the fuck away. John wouldn't let me in. He only looked at me through the chain. Where's the nigga? He wanted to know, referring to the pimp. He's up in bed asleep. That man beat me to the inch of my life. He's going crazy. Well, you can't come in here. I knew John had things in there he wasn't supposed to have, like cocaine and his girlfriend Darlene, the one who broke up his family. John knew that if he let me in, the cops would be jamming him in no time. He might have also been afraid that the pimp was right behind me. I had no choice but to leave. So I teetered and tottered my way down to the elevator, pushed the button, and when the car arrived, managed to get on. But that was all the strength I had. I slid down the wall of the elevator and landed in one big heap on the floor. So what happened was, as soon as the elevator doors opened, People came in, oh my God, what the hell is wrong with this lady? What is going on? So now you got the police, you got paramedics, you got the hotel staff all attending to Etta James trying to get her back in a good place, okay? When the pimp came down handcuffed, I was on a stretcher. I could hear him, but kept my eyes closed, pretending to be out of it. Etta, Etta, I heard him telling everyone, that's my woman, that's my baby. What's happening to my baby? Child, I had to tell you a story about something like that that happened to me before anyway. Next thing I know, he's leaning over my body, whispering in my ear, you press charges over me and I'll kill your motherfucking ass. Oh, the Jesus, ah! Oh. I press charges. The scene switches to Roosevelt Hospital. I've been taken there in an ambulance. Good old Jet Magazine was there with their cameras. Child, the Jet Magazine, you bitch you. Not long after they started sewing me up, in walks the DA. Big bad Italian cat talking about how he's gonna bust the pimp. He hates the pimp with a passion.
If you'll only press these charges against him, he says you'll be ridding New York of a scumbag. I'll do it. I agree. But how you going to protect me? Oh, girl, we going to have you with 24-hour surveillance. We going to get uh, the planet of Pluto to shine the light down on you through your womb, girl. Oh, you ain't got nothing to worry about. We going to get uh, Voltron to come through. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Never. Never. The next morning, a flash came over the radio. Miss Etta James is in serious condition at Roosevelt Hospital for a mysterious head wounds. The reporter named the pimp as the accused assailant. Later, I learned that when the pimp's mother heard the report, she had a heart attack, killed over, and died. So the pimp then got in his mind that Etta James is responsible for killing his mother. Okay? She in the room. Sipping her dinner through a straw, okay? And all of a sudden, she opens her eyes and look who is hovering over her. Look, bitch, you killed my mammy. Now I got to kill you. Oh, no, 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 sir. You ain't got to kill me. Look, look, let's come up with some type of arrangement. I won't press charges against you if you just go away. Go away, pimp. Just go away. I'm saying to myself, how the hell did the pimp get in the room? Because it was supposed to be a 24-hour officer outside of the door. What did he do? Kill her? He said, you for serious, Etta? Oh, I'm serious. Serious is a heart attack. Serious is a motherfucker. All right, bitch. I'll be back tomorrow to make sure that you make good on this promise. Okay. Okay, pimp. All right. No worries. Etta didn't give a shit. She still pressed charges against the crazy dude. Don't worry about it, man. You're off the hook. You're smart. See you tomorrow. In your dreams, motherfucker. I thought to myself. She good. She like, oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Since I can't trust the peoples to protect me, I need to get my own protection. Let me tell y'all something. Etta did the same thing that I would have did, okay? We know that these ninjas here can't protect me, okay? They don't know how to do that. All right, because things, you know, I don't know. I don't trust these niggas. I don't know these niggas, right? So first thing that Uptown Nate Rob would do is go back uptown, okay? Because I grew up with some ferocious niggas. These niggas so ferocious that they put 640 on the map. You hear me? They is responsible for giving 640 the reputation that it is. The child their offspring is even worse. What she did was she put her clothes on, got the hell out of there because she knew that them people couldn't protect her. Okay, she went down to the place where she know where she could find some ferocious niggas. Okay, and she found one. I slapped a wig on my head and went straight to 116th Street to find a Fat Jack. Fat Jack owned 116th Street. He was the big dope dealer up there. No one fucked with Fat Jack. I told him my problem. I knew he despised the pimp as much as me. Well, he will protect you, Fat Jack said. But you know what? I'm not gonna do it myself. I'm gonna give you to my brother. That ninja right there is even more ferocious. Fat Jack had a brother named Willie Jack. Willie Jack was an ignorant thug who stood way back on his legs and would just as soon shoot you in the face than smile. He had a crush on me and became my proud bodyguard. I stayed with him for four or five days before we went off to Detroit where I had a gig at the Greystone Ballroom. I was back in circulation. Detroit was a comfortable venue for me. I was flattered when Diana Ross said I was her first inspiration. I also heard my influence on other singers, Florence Ballard, for example, who was the supreme first lead singer. Despite the love complications, I knew that Gwen Gordy and her brother, Barry, enjoyed my music. A few years later, the Motown sound got a little bit fluffier where my sound got a little bit tougher. Marvin Gaye came to my Detroit gig. I was glad to see him. We'd been kids out on the road and now we were supposed to be adults. Marvin, hadn't crossed over big time, but he had stubborn kind of fellow, which was his first R&B hit. Despite that, he wasn't happy. He came back to my hotel where we snorted blow and talked things over. Marvin had married Anna, Barry's sister, a woman 17 years older than him. 
Anna was beautiful and smart. All the Gordy kids were brainy. The women were especially powerful and pushy and knew how to take care of business. Marvin needed someone to take care of him. He needed a mother. When I went back to New York, I was still scared of the pimp, but I was tired of Willie Jack hanging around. You tired of a man that would, girl, see, Etta, I like her. I like her because she is basically the bad girl of music. To me, Etta James is the original bad girl of music. Because I'm saying to myself, why the hell would you get rid of uh, Willie Jack when Willie Jack is basically, you know, protecting you? But I guess she was bored with him, you know, oh, his, uh, his breath. Oh, his hairline is not far enough. Oh, God, his fingernail. Just dumb shit. The women, we be so irritated with dumb shit. I needed another protector. When Marvin told me he had married a woman 17 years older than him, that made an impression on me. I thought, man, that's a hell of an age difference. Yet, what I did up in Harlem, I found myself a gangster. More fearsome than the pimp. A man in his 60s. Almost 40 years my senior. His name was Red Dillon. Number two, like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. Now remember this. The same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. Naysayers, my patron loves. You babies, y'all better be good. Get a vaccination. Be safe.